Hey guys, Parallel here, and welcome to Star Trek Online. In this video, I will be doing a guide to diplomacy, and in particular, how to level up your diplomacy to rank 4, so you can get all of those nice perks. And is that a gal uh, not a galaxy, that is a Guardian cruiser flying in the background there. I've never seen that before. That is uh, pretty cool. But, uh, so yes, the diplomacy system. It is part of the duty officer system in Star Trek Online, so if you open up your uh, duty officer tab here and go to the overview tab, you will see all the different categories of duty officer missions, and in particular, this guide will be for diplomacy, which is this category right here. And um, as you might expect, you, you rank this up through doing duty officer missions in this category and you get experience for doing those and you will eventually rank it up to rank 4 which this as this bar will fill up as you do the missions and as soon as it gets to 100,000 experience you will be at rank 4 and you will have access to all of these perks. Now these perks there's kind of a couple main ones here I mean they have a nice little titles and things that you can get you can read through the list here but the main ones you want to unlock are of course the uh, um, Transwarp abilities. So you get transwarp abilities to K7, um, transwarp to Starbase 39 Sierra, and then I think the last one is, yeah, Deep Space 9. So that's one major perk for leveling up your diplomacy, getting those transwarp locations. Um, and the titles are, you know, a nice thing. And the main reason that I did this is in this final uh, rank here. You see this perk here, select a single bridge officer candidate from enemy faction. So this is actually quite valuable if you are a Federation character because it allows you to uh, allows you access to get a bridge officer that is from the Klingon faction. So you can actually get your hands on a Nausicaan which gives you access to that pirate ability. And um, so as you can see here, I'll just pull up mine. I do have a Nausicaan. As a Federation character, I have this Nausicaan, which is great. Uh, I actually picked the Engineer um, since, uh, you know, in general, probably the Engineer is the best because you can actually get through the Delta, uh, the Delta Quadrant missions, you can get a Hierarchy Officer for Science. And through your Embassy, you can get Romulan Officers for your Tactical. So if you want to have a bridge officer in their engineering slot that improves your DPS, then uh, Nausicaan is a good choice. So that's, you know, one, I, I think the, probably the main reason why you would probably want to level up your diplomacy to rank four. As a Federation officer, you can get access to that Nausicaan bridge officer. So that is a nice perk. And while we're here, let's talk to the ambassador here and this is actually once you do rank up your diplomacy to rank four this is where you will go to um, you talk to him and you can actually claim your bridge officers now I don't think yes this is who you talk to normally. I've already claimed mine, so I don't believe it is showing in the list here anymore. But uh, this is this is who you come to in order to claim your bridge officer once you do get that rank. All right. So, if you want to level up your diplomacy, you of course want to do duty officer missions that are in the diplomacy category. So when you open up your diplomacy tab, go to your assignments. Um, you can see I'm starting out here on Earth Space Dock, and you can see there is, I do have a mission available here um, in the Diplomacy category, and you can see what duty officers it takes. And these are the missions that you want to do. Now, of course, if you want to grind this out in a you know efficient manner, you will want to gather up as many of these diplomatic missions as you can, um, you know, per day. So, of course, up to your daily limit of 20, 20 missions. So, this there is a certain path you can take through sector space that will give you access to a lot of different diplomacy missions um, that makes it easier to grind this out and that's what I will be showing in this video is to how, how to grind this out and get as many diplomacy missions as you can in a day and um, 
and also I guess just kind of give you an idea of what duty officers you're going to need. So starting out here on Earth Space Dock, I do recommend that you pick up this mission here. This one, Entertain Foreign Dignitaries. It shows up um, every other day or so, I think. It might be every day. I'm not, I can't remember offhand, but um, just start out right in Earth Space Dock and you can pick up this mission. You just have to make sure you have these officers. You need to have a bartender, a chef, an entertainer, and uh, a security officer, and then you can have a counselor, diplomat, or advisor. In general, for doing these, I recommend you pick up several security officers um, and several diplomats. You don't need a whole bunch of bartenders, chefs, or entertainers. Just pick up one of each of those so you can do this mission here. Um, but a lot of the missions do require security officers and uh, diplomats, so those are good to pick up. Um, if you look here in your sh in your roster, um, you can pick those up on the exchange for fairly cheap, honestly. Um, but you can go through here to your, uh, let's take a look at my security officers, but if you go into your roster tab, you go down to um, security officers, you can see I've, I have picked up three. You could pick up maybe a few more if you want to be able to queue up more missions. Um, that helps. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So first, like I said, start out in Earth Space Talk, pick up this mission here, entertain foreign dignitaries, um, and then head out into space. All right, as soon as you go outside of Earth Space Talk in the Sol system, you may get a few more of these missions. Um, now there are a few here called purchase prototypes. You will see these missions for sure. These ones cost 50,000 energy credits. They are good missions because they give you, see here if you actually look at the mission, you can see it gives you 167 diplomacy XP, which is not bad for a single mission. So they are worth doing if you are willing to spend the 50,000 energy credits. If you're not, then you know you can skip these missions and try to fill up on some of the other ones. You may get some of these blue ones, you know, it's a little bit random if they're available or not, but uh, you'll want these. Again, these take securities, security officer, a lot of these take security officers, so you'll want to have plenty of those on hand in your duty officer roster. A lot of them also take like any civilian officer, so if you have like, I think maybe even colonists you can use in there, but just any civilian, um, you'll want to stock up on those to, so you can just get as many of these missions as possible. So definitely pick up these um, just outside Earth Space Dock. And while you're here, just a couple other missions that you, you should always be considered considering doing is this one right here, Resettle Con Colonists. This again shows up about every two days. So you can do, do it about every other day. And doing this mission gives you five colonists. Um, and you can hold up to 20 colonists in your roster. If you go over to your roster here and you see passengers down here, this is all your colonists. Um, honestly, just do that. Even if you are not interested in getting into the duty officer system, you can just take these five colonists you get and you can sell them for 20,000 each on the exchange. So that's a quick 100,000 energy credits right there every two days just for doing this mission. But there are definitely other uses for colonists. If you look at, there are other uh, duty officer missions you can actually do. Like for example, this one relocating, that'll give you 500 to lithium if you could sacrifice five colonists. Um, and there are other quest chains and things you can do with colonists, so they are they are useful. Um, yeah, so that's a mission. Just you can always just pick that up very easily. Uh, a couple other ones: these this EVA suit training. You can get fifty to lithium for this one, and it's very low requirements. Just takes a two of any civilian or officer. Very easy. Um, another one you can do is in this tactical section. Um, which is, where is it, zero gravity combat training, you get another 50 dilithium for that. Very low requirement. Again, three officers that are of any type. So do those for a quick extra 100 dilithium. Very easy to do. Very simple uh, duty officer missions that don't require any special officers. Pick up a quick five colonists and 100 dilithium every, every couple days for, you know, five seconds of work. So 
that's worth it. But let's continue on with uh, diplomacy. So after we've picked up the missions here, we head out a little more. And now you get into sector space. So there are some, you know, guides out there available for, you know, grinding out uh, diplomacy. Um, but in this case, I, a lot of them are kind of old and they haven't been updated with the new sector map. So a few patches ago, they they created the, uh, they, um, what's the word for it? They took all of the separate sector maps and combined them into one quadrant map. So it used to be the, these maps used to be separated um, into you know sector blocks and they took down all of the sector blocks and turned it into one quadrant. So this is the entire beta quadrant here in the sector space. Um, so to get pick up all of your missions you do have to fly around a bit and take advantage you have to fly through several uh, uh, sectors and you know check in your duty officer tab to pick up all of those missions and so here's the recommended path that i take so you're starting out here on earth uh, in the vulcan sector right outside of the soul system and uh, what i do is i go down to the orion sector and i will start heading there now and i'll talk as we're moving First thing you can do is while you're here, uh, go to your department heads and go to your first officer, which is where you will get your diplomatic missions. And you can see everything that is available here right now, just right in the Vulcan uh, sector. This is entertain foreign dignitaries. That's still available here. You can get it also in Earth Space Dock if you want, but that's available here. And now there's several other missions here. You can see most of these are worth 50, which is not spectacular. There's one here for 64. Um, again, you can pick these up, but there are some other ones in the, some of the other sectors that do give 200, and that seems to be the about the best mission you can get, about 200 diplomacy XP per duty officer mission. So try to fill up with as many of those as possible, and then whatever space you have left in your 20 slots, pick up these 50-point missions. All right, so let's keep going here. We're going to head down to... The Orion system. So yeah, so as you're flying, just pull up your mission here, or not your mission, your assignments here, and uh, you can browse them as you're flying to each sector. And the path we'll be fi uh, following is, so going down here to the Orion sector, then you head over to uh, Japori sector, and then head uh, down again, down to, what is this one? I can't even read it. Arcanus sector. And then over to Konos to pick up some missions there. There are a few other options that you can, can select. Um, all right, so now I am in the Orion sector. So yeah, there are a few other options you can choose. Um, for different other sectors where you can go that also often have diplomacy missions if you still need to fill up you can always go over to the Risa sector and Kasse sector and also Alde Aldebaran sector has some diplomacy missions as well but typically I'll follow this path first and fill up on what I can so yeah so now that we're in the Rhine sector I'm going to go back here to the apartment heads go back to my first officer and see what is here so there's a few more missions here you could pick up. These are still kind of 50 pointers, 57 points, not too great. But uh, yeah, start out by filling up on those. And um, let's head over towards Japori, go through Celeste sector. Oh great, server's not responding. I was wondering why it wasn't moving. Um, Yes, this is very frustrating. Hey guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. I got uh, disconnected from the server. Um, where we left off is I was going to head towards Japori through the Celeste sector, and I will be doing that now. Um, and as you're flying here, just pull up, keep your duty officer window open, and go to your, you know, just keep going to your first officer and checking if there are anything new, um, if there is anything new 
that pops up when you go into each of the new sectors. In theory, I believe this is supposed to refresh when you go to a new sector automatically, but it doesn't always seem to do it. I, I do recommend manually uh, refreshing. Uh, yeah, see, I just went to Celeste sector. It doesn't always refresh, so you go just quickly to department heads, go back to your first officer, and then it will refresh. And you can keep doing that as you're going through that sector. Just keep this open and, you know, pick these up and queue these up. So here in Celeste sector, you can see I do have a few missions available here that are the... These are kind of, I think, the best missions because they each give 200 diplomacy. So definitely pick these up. There's one here, one here, and one there. So there's three, there's, you know, 600 diplomacy XP right there. In the Celeste sector, let's head over to Jipori. So yeah, those are definitely the ones you want to look for. And, um, you know, if you've already filled up on some of the 50 ones, you can always go into your in-progress missions, abort those, and then, uh, you know, pick up the 200 point uh, diplomacy missions. They're definitely worth it. I don't think you can fill up on 20 of those missions. I've, I don't think I've ever been able to fill up all 20 slots with the 200 point uh, XP missions, but, uh, you know, just get as many as you can. I mean, in theory, if you could do that, that would give you about, you know, 4,000 XP, diplomacy XP per, you know, per uh, per day. And and that would take you, what, a little over 20 days then to get to rank 4? Don't think you'll be doing that, though. It'll be quite a bit more than that. Um, let me just refresh here since we're in Japori. Nah, it doesn't look like Japori has much today. There is some randomness factor here as to which uh, missions are available to you. So then we head down south towards the next sector here. Zeratin sector. And when we get there, I'll refresh. But uh, yeah, so in theory you could... I mean, if you had to perfectly acquire... 20 missions, you know, every day, and each one is the the 200 XP uh, missions. Then you could, uh, in theory, get to diplomacy rank four in about 20 days. That's probably highly unlikely. From my experience doing this grind, it was more about uh, you get probably more like 2,500 to 3,000 XP per day doing this. So you're looking more at like, probably more like a month around there. So plan on about a month of uh, grinding this out to get to your rank floor diplomacy. All right, we got to a new sector here. Let's refresh. All right, some new missions came up. A few more of the 200 pointers, three more, not bad. Let's head down to Arcanus sector. Pick up these missions. So this is, of course, in the beta quadrant. Now, as you're doing these, I I found that it's kind of hard to do this same path two days in a row. They seem to take more than one day to refresh and get these missions back. So there's actually another alternate path you can take um, that's actually in the alpha quadrant. So I'm here in the beta quadrant. I actually not remember if I said that correctly. So yeah, I'm in the beta quadrant doing this... Uh, going through the, the diplomacy missions here. Um, but there's also another path you can take in the Alpha Quadrant that uh, I can show briefly as well. Um, uh, not much here, just this one mission for 61. Let's head over to Konos. But yes, yeah, so what I was doing as I was leveling up my diplomacy is I would alternate between uh, the Beta Quadrant and then the Alpha Quadrant. So I do the path here in the Beta Quadrant and then go over to the Alpha Quadrant and do the path there. The Alpha Quadrant one is not quite as good, but uh, there are still some of the 200 point missions there you can get. And then the next day when I would come back, pretty much most of these missions would have been uh, refreshed by then. So 
So we're over here in Konos. Let's refresh. Looks like nothing great. Alright, so that is a path you can take. So you just scan, you head from the Vulcan sector, head down to the Orion sector, then over to Japori, then down to Arcanus, and then over to Konos. Pick up all the missions along the way, and you should be pretty well set. You should have most of your 20 filled up. Now you can also, like I said, a few other of these quadrants over here, Risa, Kase, Eldebran, and Donatu sectors. You can also get some diplomacy missions there that are decent, so if you're still wanting to fill out your 20 slots, you can check them out. But for now, I am going to... Let's head back to... Let's just head back to um, Sol. And I will quickly show you the alternate path that I take in the Alpha, alpha Quadrant. Alright, we're back here in Seoul. Let's head out. And once we get out here, we can head right over to the Alpha Quadrant. Let's go ahead and do that. But yeah, as you saw when I got disconnected earlier, that um, that has been a little bit of a problem in the game lately. It's been very frustrating with the amount of lag that's been happening lately. Um, it is, a, I don't know, just kind of a constant frustration. I really hope that Cryptic kind of buckles down and gets this lag issue resolved quickly. It is... It's becoming quite frustrating, honestly. I, I've been wanting to do some build videos, and uh, my runs in ISA and Crystalline Entity have been like slideshows. I mean, just rubber banding everywhere, build abilities not activating. So I haven't been able to do any build videos lately, um, which has, yeah, it's kind of a letdown. Um, I really hope cryptic does start to invest in server in infrastructure or whatever needs to happen but uh, it's it makes enjoying the game quite difficult honestly with all of the lag that's been happening but let's keep going here in our diplomacy mission um, so here's a couple more missions here for 199 you can pick up you start out right on the Deneb sector what I usually do is just start on Deneb go over to Mizar and then head down uh, to Trill, Bajor, and then M Minos Corva. Sometimes Denobula also has some missions and kind of head up there. So, but yeah, come over here and then kind of head down this second column of sector blocks here and then make a quick stop over here to Bajor. And if you know, if you have your Dilithium Mine, you can always kind of stop by there and pick up your Dilithium Mine missions. Sector. I don't know if this one usually has some. Um, the Nobula. Alright, let's do a refresh. We got here a 199. Are these the same ones? I'm not sure if those were the same ones or not. They refresh so quickly. Um, but yeah, pick those up. So you can get some 200 point ones here as well in, in the Alpha Quadrant. Head down this way, Mizar. So we head to Mizar. Let's refresh. Auto diplomacy. These are looking like the same ones. Let's head down here to Trill. Right, so. I do want to bring some more build videos to everyone, but um, like I said, with all the lag lately, it's been very, very difficult. Um, uh, it, it's been yeah, just very hard to enjoy the game. I will 
keep hoping that uh, Cryptic fixes the leg issues. I will... Then I can get back to doing some build videos. I mean, that's that's what I'd like to do, but uh, it's just so difficult. You know, this has happened to other games that I've played. I've, I've played a lot of free-to-play MMOs, and, you know, from some of my other videos you've seen, I play Terra and Warframe. I also used to play Vindictus, and Vindictus had this exact same problem, where all of a sudden, right around the time when they re released the Arisha character, started having massive, massive leg issues in the game to the point where you know when you try to start a boat or get a group together or even interact with your inventory slots move things around it would it would lag like crazy it would um you know even being even starting a boat would be lag when you tried to zone into the instance it would be lag it was it, there was a time there when vindictus was just completely unplayable and i i frankly I quit the game at that point. I, I couldn't log in anymore because I couldn't just enjoy the game. And I, I really, really hope that doesn't happen with Star Trek Online. Um, I mean, there was a period also in Star Trek Online where the lag was really bad, and uh, you can see there's a few more missions here you could pick up. But there were a few... I mean, a few months ago, the lag was really bad in, in Star Trek Online, right around the time when they released... Um, uh, the command tree for um, yeah the command spec tree I know a lot of those abilities were introducing lags lag into the system um, but they kind of fixed that and then it was okay for a while and then now these last few weeks of uh, the lag is just coming back in force and in, particularly even since this last weekend since the upgrade weekend the the lag is just almost getting unbearable again where the rubber banding and and uh, just lack of responsiveness on any abilities is is making the game almost unplayable again and then so here's a few more missions you can pick up so that's kind of how how i do it i don't know if beta z let me check over here in beta z uh, beta z beta z sector i don't recall if there were any good diplomacy missions over there and of course, you can take advantage of your uh, slipstream drive to get to places faster as you're going through. That speeds up collecting all of your missions. So, Beta Z. Let's go back here, see if there are any missions here. Just one, yeah. There's one here for a 200, so that'd be a good stop. So, yeah, just kind of do a path down here through the Alpha Quadrant. And, uh, like I said, do this, alternate this with the beta quadrant. So go back and forth. One day do it here, one day do it in the beta quadrant. Pick up all of the diplomacy missions along that path. Um, and you should be to rank four diplomacy in about 30 days or so. About a month. Maybe a little bit more, depending on how lucky or unlucky you are. And that is how you get to rank four diplomacy. Um... If there are any questions or comments, please leave them below. In particular, you know, if you know of any other really good sectors that have some good diplomacy missions, feel free to share. Um, like I said, this was successful. The paths that I'm showing you here in this video were successful for me to get up to rank four, so they do work. But you know, I, there could certainly be other places that give you good uh, diplomacy missions and maybe worth you know passing through each day. So that is it, everyone. That will get you to your Diplomacy Rank 4. I hope you found this video helpful. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks again for watching.